This then is the new BMW M2 competition. Now there are various tiers to the BMW M hierarchy. At the top are CS models, then there are competition models like this one. Then come regular high performance M cars such as the regular M2 and M5. And then finally there are M performance cars, so anything with an M prefix like say an M550D xDrive Touring. This then is the M2 competition, so it is a more hardcore version of the regular M2 which is a car we already like and is already relatively hardcore. It's kind of old school but not old fashioned if you like. This one is a manual which is cool too, so the M2 competition is shaping up like a good car isn't it? I mean it's relatively compact so it's the right size, it has the right engine, it's got the right weight balance it ought to be a good fun car. The competition takes all that, turns everything up a little bit. You still only get passive dampers, you still don't get, oh, you get throttle bit. You don't get carbon ceramic discs, you, but you can upgrade the brakes. This one has it, and I've just sat in it, so you're learning as I do. That place called Ascari, which is in Spain, not far from Malaga. It's a long circuit, it's not a racetrack per se, it's somebody's sort of personal handling circuit, if you like. All right, first thing I can tell you is it feels louder than the regular M2. Sounds really nice actually thus far. So the M2 competition gets a bit less soundproofing, a bit more power, gets a strut brace at the front. Suspension isn't vastly different. I'll go into detail on that in a minute out on the road, I think. But the upshot is, is that it is a more hardcore version of the regular M2. The steering's more precise, you get more back straight away. Changes direction better. Wow, it changes direction really nicely. It's got an M differential that hooks up. Just as you turn in there and get back on the power, you can just feel it squat down. I'm at the moment in the standard DSC mode. Yeah, you can feel the diff just hook up and just keys in. Standard M2 is good. This is really, really nice. Still plenty of torque. It's got a turbocharged six cylinder engine that produces a decent amount of torque from low res, so you don't need to be totally up it all the time. You don't need to rev it all the way to the other side of seven, I don't think. Just feel the traction control slipping in, but even though this is in the standard mode, it's not too nannying, it's not too in your face. This is a really nice car. This is a really nicely balanced, agile, responsive car, even more responsive than before, I think, because of the bracing at the front, which just gives that extra steering precision, that extra bit of turning and agility. The key competitor, I think, for the M2 has always been Porsche's 718 Cayman. And the 718 Cayman always did keener things. That mid-engine balance means that it's quicker to respond to turning. The fact that the weight is closer to the middle meant that it was more agile. And even though you could slide the M2, I think, probably more easily, the 718 just has that better sports car thing about it. This sets out to redress some of that balance, I think, and really does it, as far as I can tell, really expertly. Just a tiny bit of understeer there. Hey, that's with MDM2. So I moved into the sports ESC mode, so it's still on, but it really does allow a nice bit of slip. There's a tiny bit of high speed understeer, but if you just come on the brakes as you turn, and then, even though that's only 4,000 revs on, so we're not in the right at the power peak, it's got enough power there in fourth at 4,000 revs to just balance the chassis on the way out of a fast corner. This is a really nice car. I am liking this a lot. So that's second. That's with MDM on and it's allowing a nice amount of slip. This is cool. This is really, really cool. Yeah, you know what? On a track day, I think it probably is suit tight, twisty circuits. It doesn't feel overly harshly sprung. I think on a track day, this would be a really great thing to drive. Really good fun. Really, really good fun. Liking this a lot. What's it like as a road car? Well, stay with me. I'll run you through some technical details and then we'll head out onto the road and find out what it is like as a road going car. What changes then between the M2 and the M2 competition? Well, the big news is the new engine. Previously, the M2 had a single turbocharged straight six, which the M2 now replaces with the engine effectively from the M3 and M4. It has two turbos instead of one, albeit here it's detuned to 404 horsepower rather than the M4's 425. 
there are bigger brakes too, and a new exhaust. It has electronically controlled flaps for a bit more noise. But I think the biggest difference in the way the M2 competition drives will come from the chassis changes. There is a wishbone shaped engine bay brace, the M4 has one of these too, and there's retuned steering map plus rose jointing in the rear suspension. The stability control has been recalibrated and new spring and damper settings finish the job. BMW says of improving response and on limit handling. What it means for the ride, we'll find out. Other changes are limited to improve the cooling, which adds a little weight, plus there is new wheels, optional seats and different door mirrors, but the general goodness of the M2 remains intact. So what does all that translate to as a road car? Well, the ride is still relatively pliant. There is an extra amount of steering feel and response and feedback to it. It's really precise now, really, really nicely precise actually, whereas some M cars when they arrive, they have steering that is accurate enough, but a little bit woolly around the edges. This feels really, really absolutely tip top. You point, it goes. And there is also, because of the changes to the rear, there is also a little bit more accuracy from the way the rear follows the front as well. So although there is some bump absorption and everything else, it just steers with a keenness that was not there before. It makes the car feel lighter and the engine's extra zing is really welcome to it makes it you know it's a real part of the immersive experience now that that engine note it's a great engine note to be fair it's so smooth the stability control is not too disruptive even on the road though you pop it into the MDM which is a kind of half off mode it just allows a little bit more slip before it gets involved that just liberates some of the handling characteristics on the right corner where you can see the miles and you've just you know it's a slow one the slowish corner with a nice exit it just helps you straighten it a bit on exit it's just a really good car to drive this a really good car to drive this so that's the question is it ultimately how good is it because the last one had a better engine the last one the current m2 which this of competition effectively replaces because there's no reason why you'd have a regular M2 when the competition is this good. So what are the changes that felt so good on track translate to on the road? It doesn't take long to realise that actually the same feel and interaction you got on circuit you could access very easily on the road as well. The changes to the suspension are not fundamental, but the little tweaks that there are make a big old difference. That strut brace at the front just seems to give an extra amount of stiffness which translates back into the steering rack so the steering is much more precise. This one is a manual, you can get a, a twin clutch but I think the manual is a nicer car for this kind of old school sports hatch, sports coupe where you don't have adaptive suspension, you don't have carbon ceramic brakes, it's just a very straightforward front engine rear drive sports car and that engine has really liberated a bit of extra verve from it as well. The gearbox is good, the gear shift is good, but on roads like this, on a lot of roads actually, you know, you're only changing gear for the fun of it. You could just let this turbocharged engine lug it out from low revs, where it really helps exploit the chassis. And that is where we are, I guess the first generation M2, it had an engine that was better than a Cayman, handling that was not quite as good, and I think the Cayman remained the better sports car. This time around, the engine has gone up yet another notch, so the engine is better again than the four-cylinder in the Porsche, and the handling, and the response, and the feel, and the goodness, all of those bits that make your fingers tingle when you're going along the right road, I think now is pretty much there. It's got to be really close to the Porsche. I'd love to try the two back to back. It's got to be really much, pretty much there. I think this is now then the best mid-range sports car you can buy.